Hello, welcome back, and welcome to my mid-year book freakout tag. And as per usual on brand, I am late to the trend, and it's no longer mid-year, but that's okay. That's okay. We're gonna just move past that. The first question is, how many books have you read so far this year in 2024? And I have read 41 books out of my goal of 50, and... The reason why my goal is 50 is like last year it was 100 and I think the year before it was 102 and last year I wasn't able to meet that goal. I would think I was like 10 short or something and I was like, I had a lot going on. I was like really stressed and this kind of just like added on to it. Like it wasn't like a source of my stress or anything but it just like, it wasn't like something that made me feel good either and so I feel like reading is not supposed to be something that does that. Like, it's supposed to be something that I use to de-stress, not something that adds on to it. So, yeah, I put, like, a shorter goal this year, like, a goal that I know I can reach. And if your goal isn't 50 books, or if it is, and you've only read six, book th six books this year, that's okay. Like, that's fine if you read at a slower pace, or if you're a mood reader and you just can't, like, get into it, that's okay. Like, it's not a race. And if someone tells you, oh my god, you only read that many books this year, you're not a real reader then they're not a real like you know people person question two is best book you read in 2024 and so far i'd have to say it's funny story which you might know based on my um reading until i find my five star book series that i did yeah you'd probably know that my favorite book this year is funny story i read it twice since it came out in april and it's always on my mind i'm always thinking about it and yeah I think that's all I have to say. Number three is the best sequel you've read so far this year. And mine is Ruthless Vows by Re Rebecca Ross, which is the second book in the Divine Rivals duology. And I feel like the reason I also really liked this book when I read it was because I was, at that time, I was like on a sequel grind. Like I was on a grind to finish everything on my TBR. And I think I was also just really happy that I finished a book on my TBR. So I think that also added to my enjoyment of the book. Question four is... New release you haven't read yet but want to and mine is The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo and I think it came out in April and I haven't read it yet but I really want to. I don't know much about it. I just know that it's like a medieval gothic fantasy set in like Spain and I know it like she used a lot of stories from like her family's history in it so I don't know. It sounds really interesting and it seems like my vibes so I'm really excited to read it. I don't know why I haven't gotten into it yet. Question 5 is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and mine is Air by Saba Tahir, which is like, I don't know if it's a spin-off, but I do know it's set in the same world as An Ember in the Ashes, and if you guys don't know, that's my new, like, obsession series currently, but yeah. So, Air, or Unraveled, um, by Shannon Messenger, and listen, okay, I know it's been years. I know that series, Keep Raw Cities, if you know, you know, if you were there, you were there, okay? It has like 10 books already. And yeah, I'm a little tired of it. And yeah, I need it to end soon because I cannot go and keep going back there. But also, like that series was my entire middle school life. Like that series consumed my entire personality. It was like, I was a part of it. It was a part of me, okay? And I will keep reading as many books as she continues writing in that series. If she decides 20 years in the future, she's... It just fell. But anyway, um, yeah, if she decides 20 years in the future that she's going to write more books in that series, I will read them. I will read all of them, okay? And yeah, so that's all that needs to be said. Question six is biggest disappointment. And Loki, I'm going to cancel myself for this answer, but The Phoenix King by Raparna Verma. And listen, I know I made a whole video talking about this book or reading this book, and I know I said I like it, and I do. I like it. It's a really well-written book. It's a really well, like, devil book, and kudos to her, and I would 100% still recommend it. But I feel like my expectations were so high, and I built, like, so much anticipation by putting it off for so long that I was, like a little a lot disappointed and that's my own fault like there's no one else to blame i would still recommend it i still think it's a great book 
and I still think everyone should read it. But I was disappointed, and I feel like once I've cooled down from like that like betrayal, um, I will probably read it again, and I feel like I'll like it better the second time. Um, but yeah, okay. And the second book I have two for this is Fear the Flames by Olivia Darling. And listen, this book, first of all, isn't that popular, okay, which was my first green flag because anything on TikTok is cursed. But yeah, so it wasn't that popular. Not a lot of people were talking about it. I think I found it out through the author. Like I saw a couple of the author's like videos and stuff and I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. It had dragons. It had like a lost princess and it had like enemies to lovers. But now that I read it, I know it's not actually enemies to lovers. That's just how it was marketed. But yeah, so it has all that, and it was promising. Not not good. It was just not good. That's all I'll say. Seven is biggest surprise, and this is the Paradise Problem, by um, Christina Lauren. I've read a couple Christina Lauren books. I didn't love them, but this book I like genuinely really 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 enjoyed. Like at first I thought like okay I'm having fun like this is fun like it's a really quick read, but then I got invested. And then I started caring, and I was like, oh, oh, I did not expect this. But yeah, I don't know if that was because, like, I read it all at once. Like, I read it, like, four hours straight. I was, like, there under the covers at, like, 4 a.m., and I looked like a bug, and I was reading it. Um, maybe it was, like, the midnight effect, but yeah. I have two more books for this category, and that's Dance of Thieves and A Number of the Ashes, which are actually series, but for some reason... I have this thing, call it a disease, where I read a book or a series and I don't like it. Okay, years later, months later, or whatever, I reread it again and suddenly it's my new hyperfixation. It's my new personality. I don't know what's up with that, but trust me, I'm working on it. But yeah, Dance of Thieves and Ember in the Ashes were part of that for me. And I was like, why did I not like it the first time? I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's I don't know. Does this happen to anyone else? Number eight is favorite author, debut, or new to you. And I don't know if they mean like new to me as in like, oh, I've never heard of this person, but I just read their book and I'm obsessed with it. Or if they mean like, okay, I know who this is, but I've never read their book before and now I just did and now I'm obsessed with it. But I'm going to choose the second one because that's the only one I could find an answer for. And mine is Arif Kwong. And I've only read the first book in the Poppy War series. But I really, really, really enjoyed it. And I have Babel, Babel, is that what it's called? Um, I have that one. And I really want to read it because I know I'm going to like it. Number nine is Newest Fictional Crush. And mine is Elias Vitorius from An End in the Ashes series. And listen, I can't give you an explanation because I don't know why. I don't know why. And I just, all I have to say is I love this man. I love this man. I love him. I want to marry him. And that's it. Ten is newest favorite character, and mine is Helena Kila, also from My Amber in the Ashes, because she is female rage, and I love that for her. Second newest favorite character is Miles Novak from Funny Story by Emily Henry, and I would have put him in newest fictional crush, but that man is like twice my age, so we're just not gonna do that. Eleven is book that made you cry, and mine is A Sky Beyond the Storm, because spoiler by the way um yeah part of my ship dies and I think that warrants some crying 12 is a book that made you happy and I don't read a lot of books that make me happy so I would have to say funny story by Emily Henry even though like this entire video has literally just been each question alternating between a number in the ashes and funny story but listen I have to speak my truth and that book made me giggle and kick my feet like ask anyone I have witnesses 13 is the most beautiful book you bought or received this year and mine would have to be the familiar and let me just show you why okay look at this look at this the sprayed edges the end papers in this essay i will like it's look at that 14 is what books do you need to read by the end of this year and i have the familiar by lou bardugo immortal longings by chloe gong the dragon republic which is the second book in the poppy wars trilogy um, by Arv Kwong, Babel by Arv Kwong, um, Unraveled by Shimmy Messenger, and Air by Saba Tahir. 15 is how many five-star reads have you had this year? And I would say three, 
but two of them are five star series as a whole they're five stars but individually i wouldn't rate each book five stars and those are shockingly enough funny story by emily henry and then the dance of thieves duology and um and i'm bringing the ashes series 16 is what books do you want to reread by the end of this year and i'm actually currently rereading the summer and pretty series because because okay we as a community have been deprived of a third season this summer and that's just unacceptable it's a crime and i need to live out my coastal dreams one way or another and this is the way i'm gonna do it i also want to reread the paradise problem by christina lauren because i need to get to the bottom of whether i genuinely enjoyed that book or whether it was like a crazed 4am like delusion situation 17 is a book you enjoyed with mixed reviews and for mine i have the crucible by arthur miller and I don't read a lot of plays, and I don't read a lot of classics, but as with a lot of classics, it has a lot of mixed reviews, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good book, okay? And I thought it was insightful. I really like the parallels he drew between the Salem Witch Trials and McCarthyism. I don't have any, like, in-depth intellectual analysis on it, but I thought it was a good book. 18 is five-star predictions for the rest of the year, and I have Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong because I would read that woman's grocery list and enjoy it. And Air by Saba Tahir, because based on the plot, and I know her writing's great, I know this is going to be like a really good book, and I'm really, really excited for it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. That's it for my mid-year book recap tag. This is my first time doing it, but I actually really had a great time, so I think I'm going to do it again next year. But yeah, thank you for watching. Um, follow me on all my socials, and see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>